a lot of faith, a lot of sorrow, and it will take uh, years for healing. But we have to take the next step and the next step, but together, and respecting them on their pace. This uh, it's very difficult to stay with those who suffer and to accompany them. So the invitation to the community is to continue accompanying each other in this move, in this move. We have different thoughts, different ways of being, but we can be a family, not just in faith, but in life. That was Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra talking about an emotional mass held in New Valley over the weekend, honoring the 21 victims of that deadly shooting at Robb Elementary. Today, marking one week since the Uvalde community was forever changed. And while the community continues to heal, today families are beginning the difficult process of laying their loved ones to rest. At 2 o'clock this afternoon, the funeral service for 10-year-old Amari Jo Garza begins. Her family says she enjoyed swimming, drawing, and spending time with family. She wanted to be an art teacher. And services for 10-year-old Maite Uliana Rodriguez will be held tonight at 7. Her family says the AB honor student enjoyed learning about animals in the ocean. She wanted to become a marine biologist. More visitations will be held for three of the victims in the Uvalde school shooting today. This is Nevea Bravo. She was 10 years old. Her aunt said on Facebook that her name is spelled backwards. It's heaven. Her visitation will be held today and tomorrow. And this is Jose Flores Jr. He was also 10 years old. We're told he received his honor roll certificate at school just hours before the shooting. His visitation will be held today with his funeral mass tomorrow. Also today, a visitation for a teacher, Irma Garcia. She was a fourth grade teacher and educator for 23 years. Just two days after the school shooting, her husband died suddenly. Her family said it was a heart attack that was caused by grief. Services for her husband will be held at the same time. Support for Uvalde continues to pour in. People from across Texas looking to help that community any way they can. A local flower shop, country gardens and seed, donating floral arrangements for the funerals. Yolanda Moreno owns the store and she says flower orders have poured in from across the country. Moreno says anyone who would like to send flowers or bring them to memorials will not be charged. It was this time last week the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center already had blood on the way to Uvalde to help the victims of the shooting. Community members continue to step up and help out, but as Max Massey shows us, the organization is still not at the levels they would like to be at. Unfortunately, just living in this current day and age, you hear and you see a lot of the trauma. Lillian Jeffs is a nurse and she knows firsthand just how valuable blood donations are and she knows how easy this process is to help out. It took me like seven minutes to come in, fill out the paperwork, donate the blood, and now I'm done. And I saved, quite possibly saved a life. In the aftermath of the shooting at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center was ready to respond. This is the, the fourth time that we've actually had to do a, a mass, be part of a mass shooting here at South Texas. We, we knew the process of what we had to do as far as making sure there was enough blood. And since the news of the shooting and news of the victims, there has been an increase in blood donors. We saw um, over 2,500 donors come through our doors um, here in, in, in San Antonio and in Uvalde area. So. It is a quick and easy process getting set up to donate. And yes, we've seen a lot of community members step up and help out over the last week or so, but we are still not at where we need to be. Uh, ideally, we would like to have a, a seven day supply to adequately supply all those hospitals that we serve in those communities. Like I said, it's 48 counties, over 100 hospitals and clinics that South Texas serves. As for Lillian, she donates every eight weeks doing what she can to make sure there is enough blood to help in whatever life-saving situation may come up. You do it to help others and that's despite whatever else they may give you a shirt or a gift card, you do it to help. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. And there are other ways you can help if you'd like. We're putting all those resources on KSAT.com including a list of some of the official funds that have been set up to help the victims' families.
Moving on to other news, new at noon, one man dead, another in custody after a shooting this morning on the city's northwest side. This after a witness at the Cheryl Oaks apartments near Bandera and Evers Road heard a single gunshot and then called police. Sarah Costa spoke with police on scene as crime scene investigators pieced together what led up to this deadly shooting. A man found dead with a gunshot wound to his head. It's what San Antonio police found when they responded to an apartment unit at the Cheryl Oaks complex on the city's northwest side this morning. That victim is a man in his 20s, according to police. Police say a witness called 911 after hearing a gun go off one time, coming from a unit just after 8 this morning. The witness gave a description of a suspect to police, a man in his 20s wearing a red T-shirt and jeans who was last seen walking toward Bandera and Evers. About 20 minutes after that interview, police found the suspect in that area. He was detained without incident. Police say they found the gun used on scene and no other people were inside the apartment unit when police arrived. At this time, it's not clear if the victim and suspect were roommates or what the relationship is between the two and police still don't know what led up to the shooting. From the Northwest Side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. A man still in the hospital this noon after a shooting just northwest of downtown. It happened around 1230 this morning in a neighborhood on Cincinnati Avenue right next to I-10. That's where police say an argument escalated into a shooting. A 40-year-old man taken to the hospital with several gunshot wounds to his chest. That suspect, though, is still on the run. And one family has a frightening story to tell this noon after someone sprayed their home northwest of downtown with bullets overnight. One of the bullets grazed a woman in her upper body. The gunfire also narrowly missed other people, including a baby. As Katrina Weber reports, police believe this shooting may have been an act of retaliation. At just after three in the morning, one family is wide awake, roused in a most unpleasant way. San Antonio police say someone fired shots at close range into their home in the 900 block of Waverly Avenue. A 59-year-old woman sleeping on a couch in a front room was grazed by the gunfire in her upper body. Two other adults quickly found out how close the gunfire had come to them and an eight-month-old baby as they slept. Police say bullets tore into a headboard of their bed about a foot above their heads. Officers immediately began trying to figure out who was responsible. They searched but did not find the shooter right away, nor anyone who saw that person in action. Still, they had their suspicions. Police told us that they're looking into the possibility that what happened here could be connected to a crime that happened earlier this month, a fatal stabbing. They say they're looking into the idea that someone in that house somehow may be linked to that case. All of that, though, is under investigation. The wounded woman, meanwhile, was treated by paramedics at the scene. Police say there also was a 17-year-old girl in the house at the time who was not hurt. But the whole family most likely is shaken by it all. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio leaders urging local teens to follow the rules of the road. According to AAA, the 100 days between Memorial Day and Labor Day are some of the most dangerous for young drivers. Traffic Authority Stephen Gavasso is at City Hall today with a life-saving message. It's a message that's been driven to young drivers over and over again. Buckle up avoid distractions, and of course, follow the speed limit. But experts say by not following these simple road rules, it has led to countless traffic tragedies. City leaders were joined by students from Johnson High School to launch the Drive Safely SA campaign. The goal is to shed light on what's considered the 100 deadliest days for teen drivers. According to city leaders, distracted driving, speeding, and not buckling up contribute to the number of deadly crashes involving teens. The campaign aims to educate drivers about safety tips, which include restricting nighttime driving, avoid drinking and driving, and limiting the number of passengers. Members of the Johnson High School Safe Driving Club lent their voices to that mission and created a digital ad which aims to encourage better driving choices. City officials tell us Texas tops a nation when it comes to deadly crashes involving young drivers during these months. I would encourage all of us to continue to hammer that message home and don't take it for granted that your, your child is going to be out there um, being as careful as they should. Now, McManus does say that his officers will continue to remain vigilant throughout the summer. If you'd like to learn more about the city's campaign, you can head over to our website at KSAT.com. Reporting here outside City Hall, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. A couple of light showers over the next couple of days, more heat too and humidity. We have a look at that forecast coming up.
Also coming up, a couple of surprises when it comes to the NCAA baseball tournament. A new local exhibit featuring an interactive approach teaching people about the earth and its climate. We have a look after the break. A new exhibit at the Duseum exploring how we can innovate solutions for more sustainable future. The exhibition is called Earth Matters Rethink the Future and it dives deep into the science behind biodiversity, climate and carbon emissions. Tiffany Huertas takes a look at this unique exhibit that's going to be open all summer. My head is in the clouds today because this section of the exhibit, it's all about thinking, thinking about the future, thinking about our planet. And this section right here, it's all about energy. We have Meredith with the museum here. Talk to us about this section. All right, so we are powering our city here. We have different forms of renewable energy. Um, so I've got wind, we've got solar, biofuel, and hydropower. And it's representing how through renewable energies, we can feed into a grid and send the energy to other places um, so kids are able to learn about renewables through a really fun and interactive and physical way and talk to us about the other sections in this exhibit. Yeah, so all of them take this approach where interactivity allows you to um, be really curiosity driven, uh, inquiry driven, and learn about our changing planet, um, and learn about how you can do small impacts can have a really big impact in the world. This exhibit is going to be here till when? Um, so this is here through Labor Day. So we're uh, doing a whole summer here with this. And we're calling it our Summer of Sustainability. So we're also um, being able to kind of share the um, features of the museum. We also have solar panels here. And oh, look, we powered the city. <laughs> Woo, yay. <laughs> But anyways, we have um, some great sustainability features of the museum, such as our solar power uh, panels. We have uh, water condensate collection that we use to um, water our landscape. So we're being able to feature those all summer long here at the museum. So there's so much to see here. You won't want to miss out. A perfect place to bring your whole family. Tiffany Huertas, Case at 12 News. Outside with live cam. Well, if you got solar panels on your house and you've got a windmill, you ought to be in pretty good shape. A lot of sun, a lot of wind. That's a very good point. A very good point. Yes, uh, another day of lots of sun and gusty winds. And the aquifer, look at this. It is down 1.7 feet today, 644.1. Not a good number. We need some rain. The pollen counts just molds. It's in the low category 420. We spotted a couple showers this morning. Could we see more? We'll look at that forecast coming up. Well, did we do it, Justin? Did we break the records for May? We will. Ugh. Technically, we haven't yet, but yes, we will. Uh, you can do the math. This is going to be the hottest May on record. And we'll have more information coming out on that. In fact, uh, meteorologist Sarah Spivey is working on an article as we speak. We'll get you some more info. But it's been a hot month. Boy, it's been just almost unbearable at some points and we're going to see another hot day today. Let me show you the time lapse. We had some clouds coming in this morning. Uh, they stayed around for a little while and now the sun is out and temperatures are on their way up. 90 degrees at the airport south southeasterly winds at 21 miles per hour. Dew point is at 69. This looks very similar to yesterday. It's going to shape up to be very similar to yesterday. Here's a look at the air temperatures and the heat index. So the yellow number is the heat index. This is the actual air temperature 90 here in San Antonio, but it feels like 95. 88 in Converse, but it feels like 92. In New Braunfels, 92, but feels like 99. Uh, we'll see that heat index jump over 100 here fairly soon, I think. We've also got the gusty winds to contend with. Gusts up to 30 miles per hour in some cases. And we'll see that through the afternoon. That southerly wind ushering in a ton of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. Very quickly, there's a check of the aquifer. And we're seeing the aquifer drop off. Uh, we showed you that earlier down to 644.4 today and still falling. We're still in stage two, but as we get into the summer, we know that uh, it's going to get uh, probably a little bit worse before it gets better. Quick check of the radar. Nothing there. We had a couple showers earlier, but uh, most everything we saw was very light and has gone away uh, with just maybe a few very light returns. But as we go into the next couple days, we may start to see a few more showers develop. This afternoon, not so much, just mostly sunny skies. But tomorrow morning, 
maybe one or two spotty showers, and then tomorrow afternoon this model shows a couple showing up. Nothing better than a 10% chance of rain. And any rain we do see is not going to be significant. As we get into Thursday, a weak frontal boundary tries to work in, and this may kick off a shower or storm. 10% chance. Most of us, most of us are going to stay dry. We'll keep in that 10% chance through Friday. And look where we are rainfall wise. 0.86 for the month. That's probably where we're going to end up. About three inches below the average. And for the year, we're at 4.48, about eight inches below average. Uh, there's a satellite picture. And you can see the clouds starting to break up a little bit more. Partly cloudy for a time and then mostly sunny this afternoon. And that's the case for most of the state. And dew points are jumping up into the 60s in several spots. Dry line setting up across West Texas again. And that's a spot along with a frontal boundary that may kick off some showers and storms this afternoon. Already seeing storms up there across parts of Missouri, but severe weather possible from Lubbock up to Oklahoma City this afternoon. This is the front that may try to get a little bit closer by Thursday, but it's not going to move through. And it really just does not bring us a, a great chance for rain. 97 this afternoon. The heat index, though, will be around 101 at its peak. We'll see heat index values around 100 for most of South Texas. Most of Texas is really dealing with this uh, pretty extreme heat. KSAT 12 hour forecast 95 at 2 o'clock. We're at 96 by 3 p.m. 97 at 5 o'clock, 95 at 6 p.m. And then slow to cool down this evening. 84 at 10 o'clock, 82 by 11 by 11 o'clock. And then clouds start to build back in again tonight and into tomorrow. We'll be close to 96. Basically Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is going to be carbon copy here. Uh, morning clouds, small, small chance for shower, and then some, some mostly sunny afternoons with temperatures in the mid 90s. Now, as we get into the weekend, the pattern changes ever so slightly, but we lose some of the humidity. Temperatures actually come up 98 Saturday, 100 Sunday, 101 on Monday. We're also tracking what's going on down there in the tropics. We've got the remnants of Agatha over Mexico producing a lot of heavy rain there. But the question becomes, will it move into the Atlantic and will it get a name in the Atlantic? Could it become Alex? We'll investigate that coming up here in just a little bit, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. It's a bummer for UTSA baseball, we'll explain, but a shot at a state title for the O'Connor Panthers is right there for the ticket. Still kind of hard to reconcile this one. The UTSA Roadrunners not making the big tournament despite winning 38 games this season, including 11 victories over ranked opponents. UTSA was left out of the 64-team field in the NCAA tournament, and to make matters worse, they're not even in the top four of the teams left out. The team got together at their race facility on campus for the selection show after missing out on the Conference USA title. They lost 9-8 to Louisiana Tech. That seemed to be their undoing. So yesterday they found out the bad news. They would not make it. Kind of surprising, though, after Saturday's dominant victory over number 14, Southern Mississippi. Head coach Pat Hallmark was asked if he felt his team had done enough to be selected. Yeah, sure. No doubt. I mean, look who we're beating. <laughs> it's the best... I mean, it's an unbelievable team. We come into their place and beat them twice. Uh, look at everybody else we beat. We beat Stanford, TCU. We beat everybody that they put in front of us. So, yes, no doubt. Obviously a major disappointment. Meantime, the Texas State Bobcats, who won the Sun Belt Conference title, received a bid to play in the Stanford Regional. That's where they will face the University of California at Santa Barbara on Friday at 8 o'clock. Time the Texas Longhorns will be hosting one of the NCAA regionals. That's after they were seeded number nine overall. Their first opponent will be the Air Force Falcons, who oh, they're very familiar with. The two teams split a series in Austin back in April, losing to the Air Force in the first game 14 to 2, but then they won the second game 12 to 10. The Longhorns and the Falcons batter up on Friday, Dishfalk Field, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, right in the middle of the heat. The state softball field has been set and the O'Connor Panthers will return to Red and Charlene McCombs Field in Austin for the sixth time in program history. And for the first time since 2012, the Panthers swept Westlaco in the UIL Class 6A Regional Final of the weekend, 5-1 and 7-6. They are headed to state thanks to clutch double play there that ended the seventh inning and ended Westlaco's rally. O'Connor has yet to lose a playoff game this season. They have outscored their opponents 68 19. So 30 and 1 O'Connor will face El Paso Americas in the Class 6A state semifinals. Friday, 4 o'clock, Trailblazers are 33 and 6. And in Class 1A, Dennis returns to the state semis for the fourth time in the 
last five years. They're going to face Dodd City in Tuesday at 1 o'clock. That's a rematch of last year's state title game. Can you imagine not losing a single game in the playoffs? Well done, That's ladies. Pretty strong. Yes. Yeah. Do you snack at night? Of course you do. No. Some of us do. It's a <laughs> habit that can be hard to kick, but staying away from snacking before bedtime is good for your overall health. Coming up today at 5, 12 News Live's Marilyn Morris explains the steps you can take that can help kiss those late night cravings goodbye for good. A bit more movement on the sticky issue of gun control. The bipartisan group of lawmakers continuing negotiations today on Zoom over how to best respond to the recent string of deadly mass shootings. ABC's Ike Jachi reports lawmakers say these talks could yield a new set of federal gun laws. A group of Senate Democrats and Republicans are meeting today on Zoom to continue negotiations on passing new gun laws in America. The renewed talks come after a deadly month of shootings, most notably the Buffalo supermarket shooting, where an allegedly racist gunman drove several hours to shoot and kill 10 black people, and the Uvalde Elementary School massacre that claimed the lives of 21 people, including 19 children. It's the most important thing we could do is just show that progress is possible and that the sky doesn't fall for Republicans if they support some of these common sense measures. Some areas of focus and possible agreement among the group include expanding background checks on gun sales, which has been voted down in Congress multiple times. Red flag warnings, which would prevent someone from possessing a firearm if they have certain histories of concerning behavior. Also discussed, funding for more mental health resources. Some Republicans, like Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger, an AR-15 owner, are ready to increase the age limit to purchase a firearm from 18. I think that raising the age of gun purchase to 21 is a no-brainer. But one gun owner who attended the recent NRA convention in Houston says while she's heartbroken over the mass shootings, she doesn't think any new laws could prevent them. It's unnecessary and it's uncalled for, but we will never be able to stop it. You stop me! You stop me! President Biden, following his trip to Uvalde, Texas, is calling on rational Republicans to act and pass common sense gun laws. And in Canada, where they've already banned 1,500 assault style weapons, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announcing legislation that would prevent the purchase, sale, or transfer of handguns anywhere in Canada. Trudeau going on to say they're capping the market for handguns. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Supreme Court officials are ramping up their investigation of a leaked draft opinion that would overturn Roe v. Wade. CNN reporting they are now asking law clerks to provide phone records and sign affidavits in their search for the source of the leak. Politico published the draft opinion back on May 2nd, prompting an outcry among conservative court members poised to roll back abortion rights. Chief Justice John Roberts called the leak absolutely appalling and suggested one bad apple had tainted public perception of the court. CNN sources say some clerks are considering hiring outside counsel to handle the probe. Here we are, last day of May. Feels like maybe August or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, uh, if summer, if May is in any indication of what summer's going to be like, it is going to be hot and, uh, well, really hot <laughs> because uh, we've had so many records here in May. And as we go into June, it looks like we're going to see some triple digits coming back in the forecast. I want to show you the headlines. Here's what you need to know next few days. Uh, more heat, humidity, and wind today. That's kind of the big story. And then Wednesday and Thursday, lucky if you could see a downpour. Anything we see, though, is going to be quick and uh, not going to put down much rain. And then the tropics, Agatha becoming Alex, looking increasingly likely as this system pulls into the Gulf of Mexico, but it does not look like it'll have any impact on us. As we look across the state, you can see some of the cloud cover that's feeding up on those humid winds coming off the Gulf of Mexico. Partly cloudy skies right now here in San Antonio, and our forecast calls for temperatures to eventually make their way up to around 97 this afternoon. Of course, it will feel hotter than that. Heat index values will be up near 100 here in town. Most places will see heat index values close to 100. And from here, more heat heads our way. The weekend especially looks hot. Another look at that seven-day forecast is coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Marijuana's effect on the body and brain is still being studied. While we know it can affect memory and attention, researchers say it may also affect a person's risk of having a stroke. With more, here's ABC's Justin Finch. 
Marijuana is a commonly used drug that's still federally illegal. Marijuana use has already been linked to higher risk of first-time stroke, possibly by damaging heart and blood vessels. But a recent study suggests young users are also at higher risk for a recurrent stroke. Researchers from Mercy Fitzgerald Hospital in Pennsylvania said studying marijuana risks is important because of how common its usage has become in young adults. They found young adults with active marijuana use disorder were almost 50% more likely to have a recurrent stroke than those who were not regular users. They also found males, young black or white adults, and people living in low-income neighborhoods had the highest numbers of cannabis use disorder. And young adults ages 18 to 44 with cannabis dependency were also less likely to have high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol, which are usual stroke risk factors in older adults. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch. Just as folks were starting to get back into their old routines pre-COVID, morning commutes, high gas prices, throwing a wrench into things, how some workers are pushing back against companies so they can keep on working from home. And speaking of working from home, new research says that pivot during the pandemic may have had some pricey consequences. We'll explain coming up. On these are your top headlines for Cheddar News. A chaotic holiday weekend saw more than 7,000 flights canceled all over the world, hundreds more delayed. That's all according to flight tracking website FlightAware. Airlines say weather, air traffic control, COVID cases, and staffing issues were the primary culprits. Meanwhile, the European Union has agreed on a partial ban of Russian oil imports. This will impact three quarters of Russian imports. The European Council chief announced that agreement on Twitter Monday, saying that the ban is, quote, a huge source of financing for Russia's war machine. And and Ford is now starting their deliveries of their F-150 Lightning truck, with the first going to a Michigan resident who is also on the waiting list for Tesla Cybertruck. That all according to Bloomberg. The delivery is a major win for the automaker, despite Rivian beating both companies to the first electric truck delivery last year. And that's your Jenner News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Jenner Studios in Lower Manhattan. For news, during the pandemic, a lot of people made the switch and started working from home, and it may be one of the reasons why home prices have been skyrocketing. New research shows that home prices jumped 23.8% during the pandemic, and that 15% of that growth was due to remote work. Many people tuned to warmer climates around the Sun Belt, which was a driver of prices. By the end of the fourth quarter of 2021, the median single-family home in Austin grew by 26%. Phoenix by 26, Boise by 24 percent. As inflation fuels the cost of transportation, a simple commute to work every day could take a big bite out of your wallet. And with more Americans heading to the office now, they're feeling the pinch every time they fill their gas tanks. CNN's Gabe Cohen has more. It seems twisted that getting to work is financially crushing Liz and Scott Angstad. Their combined commute more than 500 miles each week through New Jersey. With Scott paying $6.19 a gallon for his diesel-powered pickup. Oh, their monthly gas bill has nearly doubled in a year, now over $1,000. We cut back in our groceries and what we eat. We cut back more than half of what we're going to travel this summer. We wouldn't think that we would be talking about money every single day. While this couple's commute is longer than most, as more workers get called back to the office, millions are feeling this squeeze. With the national average gas price more than $4.60 a gallon, at some California stations, the price is higher than the federal minimum wage. It's already bad. It could get worse. And it's definitely not going to get much better. The average U.S. commute now costs an extra $35 a month compared to pre-COVID. Far more in cities like L.A., San Francisco, Chicago, and New York. I'm not able to work from home. Spencer uh, Jewell says he's paying an extra 50 bucks a month to get to work in Greensboro, North Carolina. When is it going to come to an end? I can't work. I'm in Atlanta, Kirsten Ashley says gas is too pricey for her to take a job. It's not worth it almost because I'm getting paid maybe $10, $12 an hour. An international survey conducted last November found 64% of workers would consider looking for a new job if forced to return full time. 
In Washington state, more than 100 contracted Google Maps workers signed a petition refusing to return to the office. It's a huge additional expense. Tyler Brown would have to drive 74 miles each way. It doesn't make sense for me at the moment for $19 an hour, so I'm going to have to look for a different job. Workers are looking at it from a standpoint of, can I afford to take that new opportunity or can I afford to stay if required to go back to the office? But some don't have easy options. It's very frustrating, but uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Scott Angstad is eight years from his pension as a railroad engineer. To throw that away, I mean, that's thrown away a lot. So there's no plan to change direction, even as they pump the brakes on long-term plans. That picture has kind of altered. We might not be retiring in eight years. Was that 90? Mm -hmm. Already? Is that 90? Already? Oh. Yeah. Smoking hot. Uh, it is. Uh, and those clouds are thinning out a little bit more. We'll make it into the upper 90s this afternoon. That is the average high, by the way. We're already to the average high, so we're going to be above average. We were above average this morning. That's how we know at this point that we are going to set the record for the warmest May on record. The record high is 104. That was set back in 2004 and 51. Set back in 1984. We will be nowhere near that anytime soon. We'll look into June and get you your extended forecast coming up. KSAT 12 celebrates Military City USA, powered by USAA. Young men and women who enlist in the United States Air Force arrive in San Antonio, Texas, or Military City USA. New recruits begin their basic military training at Lackland Air Force Base to gain important and crucial skills to become an airman. Here's a look at basic expeditionary airman skills and training, also known as BEAST. Whoa, place your weapon above your head! So this exercise, this is a culmination of every single thing that the trainees have learned out in basic training. So when they come here from their line squadrons, they've already learned their base defense skills, which we call FEST, TCCC, which is how they treat a combat casualty. Alarm yellow. New recruits will train on different levels that test their overall readiness before deployment overseas. And then at the beginning of the week, we teach them their chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear training skills. So this exercise is them taking all those different skills that they learned from the week, and they put it into one integrated exercise to show that they can actually do the mission in an expeditionary environment. This right here, baseline, many of these trainees from the day one when they hit the ground will be ready for deployment. Some of them will, some of them will not. So this right here at a minimum will give them those skills that they need to fulfill their job. We're going to need an umbrella and it's not going to be because it's raining. <laughs> well, we have a 10% chance. Yes. That's not a lot. Talking about heat protection. Mm. Yeah. The, 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 the problem with that 10% chance, these showers pass over you in about 30 seconds, <laughs> and you're talking about the a point? trace of rainfall. So yeah. <laughs> it is there, but it doesn't really do much for us. You know, this time of year, when we get into the summer, we start to look to the tropics. Could we get any rain there? Uh, we do have some tropical weather to talk about, but it's just not headed towards Texas. This is the remnants of Agatha. Made landfall yesterday in Mexico, brought a ton of rain, some gusty winds. There was some damage there on the west coast of Mexico. It is crossing over Mexico now, starting to see that center of circulation reemerge back out into the Gulf of Mexico. Conditions are not ideal for redevelopment, but a slow redevelopment is possible. You can see the low right over the mountainous part of Mexico there. As it moves back out into the Gulf of Mexico, it will bring rain to places like Cancun and Cozumel in the coming days, but a 60% chance of redevelopment according to the Hurricane Center. And it will be sort of a slow process here, but we do think bottom line, that places like South Florida and Cuba could get quite a bit of rain out of this. And if it were to redevelop, again, there's a decent chance for that, it would be named Alex. Gets a new name once it moves into the Atlantic and then uh, it may develop further as it moves out into the Atlantic. We'll keep you posted, just it's not going to have any effect on us whatsoever. As we go outside for you, some blue skies starting to shine through. 90 degrees at the airport, 91 stents, and 90 at Kelly, 88 at Randolph, and a south-southeasterly breeze at 21 miles per hour. Those winds still pretty gusty. It's 90 at the airport, yes, but it feels like 95 thanks to the Increased humidity today feels like 97 at Stenson, feels like 92 in Converse. Seguin, your heat index at this hour is 95. 
Dew point trend. Dew points try to come down a little bit this evening into the mid 60s, but that's still enough to get you a heat index. So we'll probably see heat indices top out near 100. And then by tonight, that dew point quickly increases again, and we're back in the 70s to start tomorrow morning. Another sticky start. And gusty winds aren't going anywhere either. We're starting to see gusts now close to 30. Yesterday we had gusts to 35, so winds aren't as strong today, but still windy. And we'll see some gusts again tomorrow before the winds finally calm down by the end of the work week. Uh, there's the satellite picture, and uh, clouds are there partly cloudy skies for most of us a little cloudier as you go out west del rio and rock springs and we've seen a few very light sprinkly showers show up to the east of san antonio and really those have since dissipated but that moisture surging north and there is a frontal boundary right there you can almost pick it up on the visible satellite picture and it's along that front today where we are expecting some storms to fire as it uh, pushes south there's also a dry line out west so the Storm Prediction Center has areas from Lubbock to Wichita Falls up to Oklahoma City underneath a risk for scattered severe weather today. This front tries to push south and by Thursday it gets in our neighborhood, but it doesn't push through and really by that point it's starting to fall apart. There may be just enough energy there to get a few isolated storms going Thursday afternoon, but uh, nothing that jumps off the page. As we look at the forecast here, this is 5 o'clock today, mostly sunny skies, and then clouds build back in tomorrow morning. This model does show a couple showers perhaps popping up tomorrow afternoon, 10% chance. It's all we can give you. And by Thursday with that frontal battery, 10% chance as well, maybe a small chance on Friday. And after that, any sort of rain chance shuts off. Well, let's look way into the future now. We'll take you to June 5th through June 9th. The uh, Climate Prediction Center forecasting what temperatures will be like in that 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. And we look at this from time to time to give us an idea beyond that seven day forecast. What is the what are the temperatures going to look like? And they believe it will be a good chance of it being above average and looking at temperatures down the line. Looks like it is going to be pretty toasty. We've got triple digits Sunday through Monday. In the meantime, just that 10 percent chance of rain highs in the mid 90s in the weekend. Yeah, it'll be mostly sunny and hot. Thank you, Justin. 60 years after he missed out walking on the stage and getting his diploma, a California man is making that dream come true. Why well, he says a few bucks cost him big all those decades ago. A 78 year old man in California finally got a chance to fulfill a lifelong dream. He got his high school diploma. Ted Sams finally received his diploma alongside the class of 2022, 60 years after he missed out on his own ceremony because he got suspended five days before he was set to graduate. During that time, he missed taking a required final exam. Well, he went back, he took the exam that summer. However, he still wasn't allowed to get his diploma. When I went back with my grade, they wouldn't give me my diploma because I owed $4.80 for a book. And so I just walked away and said, forget it. And over the years, I've complained to my kids a number of times about how $4.80 kept me from having my diploma. Apparently he came up with four bucks and 80 cents to add to the celebration. The school still had his original diploma locked away in an old filing cabinet. They knew he was going to pay up someday. They kept it for him. Getting a pie in the face is a classic comedy skit. But a man in disguise literally threw a cake in the world's most famous painting recently. CNN's Jeannie Mose has a full story on the creaming of Mona Lisa. I've covered lots of people like Ralph Nader getting a pie in the face. But when the face of the Mona Lisa gets creamed, that's a different story. No. Take it from two guys who were there in Paris's Louvre Museum. A lot of people just started gasping and like we heard some oohs and ahs. And this is the guy who admitted creaming the Mona Lisa. A man dressed as an old lady um, jump, um, jump out of his wheelchair. Faking being handicapped allowed him to get closer to the painting after first pounding on the bulletproof glass that covers the Mona Lisa. He literally pushed a cake on the glass. <laughs> Yeah, just straight up just smushed or smashed the cake right up on the glass. Security grabbed the suspect and the cream was quickly wiped away. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. 
celebrated in song, but why? Slapped with cake. Think of the earth. There are people who are destroying the earth, he said in French. Artists tell you, think of the earth. That's why I did this. The museum says the painting was not damaged. There were plenty of online jokes. The Mona Lisa watching as a guy approaches her with a cake. When they were done cleaning her up, the crowd applauded. Mona Lisa have a pretty smile. I don't know why this guy did that. <laughs> but he definitely didn't manage to wipe that smile off her face. Do you smile to tempt the lover? Genie Mouse, CNN. New York. <laughs> well, we have got so much on today's show. Fiona is getting ready to run away with circus, something like that, because Aqua Acro brings the circus to Market Square, and Jen and Fiona are actually going to try out some of these circus tricks. I always knew she was going to be a circus performer. Easy Pork Sliders with mom and cookbook author Meg Dow, creator of More Mama. Nothing like easy recipes for dinner. Piggy Bakery whips up some very easy treats for our nation's birthday that you'll want to make all summer long. Oh, I love these great summer dishes. Hey, you getting ready to throw a steak on the grill? Who doesn't love a good grilled steak? We have some tips from Seguin Pitmaster and cookbook author Adrian Davila. Up close and personal with reptiles and birds. Fletcher Reptile and Bird Rescue is going to be here. And a couple of young gentlemen, these brothers, these Solis brothers, are going to be performing for us. Boy, are they talented. Mom and Dad are going to be very proud. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live. So stick around. Welcome back. 91 degrees, 97 this afternoon. Just a small, small chance of shower. Now that'll be the case the next couple days. 10% chance Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Temperatures in the mid 90s by the weekend. The heat cranks up. We'll lose some of the humidity, thankfully. 98 Saturday, 100 on Sunday, and 101 on Monday. If you see a shower next couple days, just know it's not going to amount to much. Uh, it's nothing there significant rainfall wise. And we're still watching the tropics, but nothing that will affect us here in Texas, guys. Uh, it's too soon to be that hot. Thanks, Justin. A little warm. Um, so this version of the SA Live show, is it the tortoise and hare show? Is it a fast or a slow show? Because I had the little tortoise, little turtle. I remember. <laughs> Thanks, Ursula. You're welcome. <laughs> SA <laughs> Live starts right now. <laughs> Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Hello and happy Wednesday. It's normally a little wild here on SA Live, but today it's literally a circus. Good afternoon. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky in for my coaster hate. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza, and we're going to tell you how you can run away and join the circus in just a little bit. <laughs> okay, but those are some of the talented entertainers from Aqua Acro. Not only are they putting on a show for you, but we're about to give their tricks a try. Wait, we, we are? Can, apparently, <laughs> that's what it says here. We have to give their tricks a try. Oh, I'm not ready. I know, I'm not ready. I'm not either. ready. But, All right. But we'll give it a try. Yes, Aqua Acro is an entertainment company of gymnasts, aerialists, acrobats, synchronized swimmers, hula hoopers, jugglers, and more of these circus performers put on public and private shows across the region, wowing audiences with their incredible talents. Oh my gosh, they look amazing. All right, aerial performer Claudia Torkelson is here along with Corey Torkelson, a juggler with Aqua Acro. Welcome, you two. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, you guys are going to teach us a few moves, right? right. So uh, who's going to go first? Jen. Uh, okay. Yeah. Jen <laughs> <laughs> I like how Fiona said that. Okay, okay. Okay, so we're gonna, this is a lira, this is a lollipop lira. So you're gonna reach your arms up, grab as high as you can, okay. engage your back muscles, okay. and see if you can pull yourself up. And if you're able to pull yourself up, then maybe we can hook a leg, and I'll give you a little spin. Okay, okay. okay. Are you ready? Okay. By the way, they have four kiddos, and they've been doing this how long? Uh, we're, I've been, uh, That's I've been an athlete for about 20 work. years. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Claudia. I've been doing aerial about 
about four years. I've been an athlete uh, pretty much about four I, years. Twenty five years for like forty <laughs> seconds at the most. And so how is she doing? She's doing amazing. Oh, amazing. Oh, she's already oh, going oh, into oh, the next oh, day. Oh, you want to oh, stop me? We didn't think this through. But that looked really good, Jen. Hang on. So pretty. Wow. She's a natural. <laughs> so this is all the thing yeah. you do. You sit here. Yeah. So I try to get my leg through. The yeah. Leg. And if you want, you can try to hook the other leg. Yeah. There you okay. go. different things you can do on this apparatus and all the different apparatuses in Ariel. And we have classes going on throughout the city and you can look at um, aquaacroentertainment.com to find out more. All right. Okay. So while Jen dismounts from that <laughs> contraption, I'm going to learn a little juggling from you, there right? You That's right. Okay. Have you yeah. ever juggled before? Uh, <laughs> not professionally, no. Okay. All right. <laughs> does, so does juggling life count? Yes, you it does. Kids, it counts. So you probably be an counts. amazing juggler. I am. <laughs> okay. um, so I'm going to teach you a cascade pattern. Okay. Um, first thing I want you to do is grab the silk and the wind out here is going to make it a little more challenging oh, but no. grab it right at the top, top like you're making a parachute Okay. and then you're going to throw it up and claw back down at it. Oh yeah, there's way to go. Okay, Good. yeah. Uh -huh. Try it a couple times. Whoa, don't let it get away from okay. you. Okay. And then see if you can switch to the other hand. So throw it across. Uh-huh, throw it across. Uh, yeah, that wind's making it yeah. tough. Uh -huh. Throw it back. Okay. okay. So now I think you're ready to try the exchange. Okay. Think about an X, an right? X? An, an exchange. Okay. So exchange. throw it across, right, left. Like that. Good. Okay. Now go, there you go. go. Back, and then there, and then back. Okay. Very good. I didn't even think you were going to get that far. I was hyper focused. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I don't think I was breathing. So <laughs> now make your fingers like this. Okay. Okay. And we're going to hold this one up top. Okay. And I want oh. you to throw it. And and do the cascade pattern. Okay, do the cascade pattern. One, two, three, four, yes. five, Woo! six, seven, eight. Oh. That was awesome. It's a little windy here okay. today. Try All it. right, so let's try that again. You can do this. Come on. Okay. That wind. The wind. Cascade pattern. And one, two, three, four, Ooh, five, yes. six. Yes. Right, you're yeah, yeah, we've performed at um, the San Antonio Zoo, we've performed at um, the Doceum, um, we have a big uh, gig this weekend at Typhoon, Texas in Austin and uh, in Houston, uh, just all over all over San Antonio and, and Texas, really. Got it. And if someone thinks they have the skills to maybe join you guys, what's the best way for them to do other tryouts? Oh, you can contact aquaacroentertainment.com for more information. Okay. Perfect. All right. And if, if 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 someone doesn't have experience, is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> we need to try out some class. I think people are <laughs> <I'm> interested. <laughs> Love to have you in class. Okay. <laughs> and if you'd like to see them for yourself this Saturday, you can see part of Aqua Acro team at the San Antonio Zoo, like you mentioned. So that's really awesome. Yes. So we gave it a good try, but Claudia and Corey are going to show you how it's done the right way. Take it away, guys.
and Corey, so graceful up there. Also, we have another performance coming up, another set of talents that we are going to try, including stilt walking. What could possibly go wrong? I don't know. One that? of us you? might get a nosebleed. I don't you know. <laughs> we'll find out. Now, we are learning new talents, but what is your hidden talent? You know, can hmm. you burp the alphabet? <laughs> Maybe you can juggle, just like Corey can. Um, but let us know at SA Life Case Out on Facebook and Twitter. Um, in the yesteryears of my life, um, I am a third degree black belt in Taekwondo. So I guess my hidden talent that maybe a lot of people awesome. don't know about is, is yes. martial arts. That's awesome. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't bend certain ways anymore, but you know, that's in awesome. theory. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> if you didn't know about Fiona, yeah, I asked, my, well, I asked my kids, well, do I have a hidden talent? And, and the things they said were hilarious, but I play soccer. There, that's all I have. I'm not as cool as Fiona. Bend it like that. <laughs> <all right. laughs> so there you go. Yes, uh, that's it. But let us know again on Facebook, Twitter, at SA Live Case that We may uh, maybe share a photo, too. Yes, we'd love to see that. All right, well, easy summer cooking for the whole family. That is what Meg Dow is all about. The mom of three, cookbook author, and food blogger is helping families with easy time-saving meals. Yes, she has over 50,000 Instagram followers, and I just had to catch up with her because all the food photos were making my Ooh. mouth water. She shares a summer recipe perfect as we get close to the holiday weekend. This is a great summer recipe that you have that you're going to share, and it's pretty easy, right? Yes, it's very easy because we all eat easy, especially in the summertime. So we're going to make these full pork sliders, and it's done easily in the Instant Pot. Um, this is actually from the No Shop Instant Pot cookbook, my cookbook that came out in March. And it's really an easy recipe to follow. So let's get going. I'm gonna show you what to do. I've already cooked my pork. Um, this is just country style pork ribs and it doesn't have bones in it. It's just an easier cut of meat to cook in the Instant Pot. It cooks a lot quicker. So I cut it up into pieces and then you just cook it on manual high pressure for about 40 minutes and then you'll drain the excess liquid off. That's my tip in the Instant Pot. A lot of times you put all the flavorings in there with all the liquid and the juices that release from the meat and then it gets watered down. So my tip is to not water it down, just put it in. So we are actually gonna add our sauce and the sauce is really easy. It's just ketchup and some pineapple juice and that's it. And it's so good. We cooked the, um, the pork with a little bit of liquid smoke. So that's where it gets the smoky, really kind of barbecue-y flavor. And we shredded it up. And then you guys, this is how easy it is. You just stir it all together and put it on some toasted brioche buns. So I have my brioche buns here. And you can use any kind of buns you want. You can use mini sliders if you want, like the Hawaiian rolls are great. Um, really whatever you want to do, or you can even put this in a grilled cheese. It's so good. I mean, literally this meat, you can just eat it plain. It's so delicious. So we have our pulled pork, and then I just made some easy coleslaw, and you can literally just buy the coleslaw mix from the market. And then I like to use Greek yogurt instead of mayonnaise and just a little bit of lime juice and some salt, and that's it, it's that simple. Um, okay, and then this is the secret ingredient. <laughs> I love putting potato chips on top of the whole pork sliders. They're so good. You can either do like the Maui onion chips. Those are amazing, kind of like a Hawaiian flair, or you can do sour cream and onion. Literally, you can do any kind of potato chips you want, but my favorite, my all-time favorite is the Maui onion chips. They're so good. And then that's it. It's so easy and so delicious. Look how good that looks. Overall, how long would you say that took to make it? looks amazing. So while well, it cooks in the Instant Pot for 40 minutes and then literally you just assemble them and that's it. So you're not really cooking at all in those 40 minutes. The Instant Pot is doing all the work for you, which is why I love this machine so much, especially when you have kids or a big family, it cooks things so easily. It's a lifesaver. But this is just one of many recipes you have. Where can people find out more and what are some of your other favorite recipes? So I have a blog called moremama.com where I share a lot of easy family friendly recipes. We have 10 minute dinners on there. I mean, really, I love to cook simple. I am a trained chef, but I don't 
don't have the time to cook really chefy things. So you can find me on moremama.com or also on Instagram at moremama. And then we also have a cooking school. If you're new to cooking and you need some help in the kitchen, we have a cooking school um, where we offer single classes. And then we also offer a 12 month cooking course where you're learning from professional chefs what we learned in culinary school. So it's an awesome thing you can do with your kids or adults, and it's just really fun. And you see it there, use the code 25 off to get 25% off any of those classes. And what I really love about her recipes is that they're quick and easy and fun. And if you go to her homepage, they have a pudding cup that looks like a beach and you put graham crackers and a little gummy bear, a little tube. And Julia and I made that last night. It was less than $5. That's it, and less did she love it? She oh, must she have loved, loved it. it. Yes. yes, so it's something you can make. Um, I really enjoyed that, so yeah. <laughs> all right, well for more information, all you have to do is head to our website, essaylive.com and click on the seen on SA Live tab. All right, still ahead on the show, our circus day wouldn't be complete, well, without the animals. So meet a rescue taking care of some untraditional pets and how you can help them. But first, it's the sweetest way to celebrate the 4th of July. We're making red, white, and blue treats and teaching you decorating tips to wow your family. That's next on SA Live.